New at 11, some area parents give a school board an earful about what their kids heard in an assembly. At a time when many school districts look at requiring uniforms, the state institutes its own policy. Plus, police get their first big break in the search for a son many believe killed his Otsego County parents. Now, live, you're watching News Center 6. New at 11. Good evening, everyone. New at 11, parents wanting the first say on discussions of diversity. The disagreement comes after a discussion on homosexuality before some students in the Gilderland District. That prompted many parents to demand a change tonight at the school board meeting. Doug Lazette reports. If I hear faggot one more time, I'm going to go. Or I'm going to show up. A program on homosexuality and the need for tolerance attracted a large crowd of 9th, 10th, and 11th graders on Monday. One day later, a regular meeting of the Gilderland School Board drew another big crowd. This time, it was parents and students who wanted to speak out on what had been said. And uh, there were even references to sex, sex acts, and gay sex. I mean, I could not believe what I heard during those sessions. A handful of adults thought the optional assembly delivered by a gay man and a lesbian woman went too far. But most people who stood at the microphone were students, and they told Gilderland school officials the program was meant to inform, not to recruit. The purpose of the assembly was to mainly teach, and to teach kids to be tolerant of different people. I think we all know that. It wasn't to impose homosexual thoughts on students. That's ridiculous. And after more than two hours of discussions tonight, uh, the school board members, most of them, and the superintendent of schools agreed that the program, though it might have been controversial, did su succeed in its goal, and that was to try to make kids more tolerant of, in this case, people who are homosexual. But, Doug, what about the parents who are opposed, uh, given that uh, majority school board position? Do they feel betrayed in this? Well, they didn't get much satisfaction tonight, although probably board members who weren't aware that a student group was going to bring these speakers into this voluntary assembly. School board probably next time is going to want to be more informed, just so if they choose to, parents can be told about this more fully before the kids uh, have the chance to attend such a program. All right. Doug Lizette reporting live from our news center. Thank you. It's one and the same these days at youth detention centers around New York State. New York now requires each child to wear a uniform for those in custody at places like the Brookwood Center here in Greenport. Every youth wears a red shirt with khaki pants and the same shoes. Officials say the uniform serves three purposes. First, it eliminates kids from wearing gang colors. Second, it allows people to identify escapees. And finally... And the third reason, and equally important, is... You eliminate the haves and the have-nots, kids who come in with the expensive sneakers or have an opportunity through their own money to buy the expensive sneakers. Uh, you eliminate the jealousies and the possible fighting over those sorts of things. Each uniform costs $310, and the state says it is considering having many staff members wear uniforms as well. A team of investigators from the New York State Police are in Boston tonight following a lead in the murder of an Otsego County couple. A car, which belonged to Gordon and Susan Maurer, was found at Boston's Logan Airport. The couple was found murdered in their Richfield Springs home last month. Now, there was no sign, though, of the Maurer's son, who police suspect may have killed his parents, or the 14-year-old girl who authorities think ran off with him. Lawyers for Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols will get a chance to look at letters from a controversial FBI agent in the Oklahoma City bombing case. In the first of several pre-trial hearings in Denver today, federal prosecutors agreed to turn over the memos, which include tests on McVeigh's clothing. McVeigh and Nichols are charged in the bombing last April that killed 168 people. The trial is not expected to start until fall. Federal authorities also originally suspected a third man in the bombing, Terry Nichols' brother, James. He was arrested and charged, but the charges were later dropped. While he walked away, James Nichols, though, did so after a very scary experience. Terry Phillips has more. Really humiliating. Oh. You know, you're being paraded around as a big old bad criminal and you didn't do anything. James Nichols is a free man today. But just about one year ago, the Michigan farmer was being held in connection with the Oklahoma City bombing. And they said that we mix the bomb, the fertilizer and the fuel oil in this and then put it in barrels or something, put it in a truck and drove it to Oklahoma City. For three days, agents painstakingly combed Nichols' property, 
searching for evidence which would tie him to the April 19th federal building explosion. It was all under a relentless national spotlight. I've been totally opened up, dissected, verbally, physically, emotionally. Uh, I've got no secrets left, you know.